Hello my soccer universe, to a uh, long overdue, it was a really really busy day for me, review of the Europa League match day 5, we will talk about all the games and the situations in the groups, but I definitely want to start out with Lusk's performance at Anfield and the overall situation in Group E. For many Lusk fans this was THE game. This is the first time that you, because before when we played a uh, big English opponent, it was Corona, it was the first time we actually could go to a big Premier League stadium and watch your own team. Uh, and that it's Anfield just adds to the mystique. This was absolutely uh, top of the line. Uh, I think many requests were there. There was actually a little bit of an upset of how uh, the tickets were distributed, but that's beside the point at the moment. Again, uh, you know, org organizations are great. The fact is that it was somewhere bit to around two and a half thousand Lusk fans were in the stadium in Liverpool, and I said it already in my short video, the support was absolutely awesome. I have not seen something like that, f if ever, at, I mean, I'm not an expert on Anfield, but you know, I watch a lot of uh, games of Liverpool, and the support there was, uh, that was just, something else and I also said in my short video you could see they were really celebrating the fact that 10 years ago Lusk was about to go bust and here we are at Anfield playing on the same field as Liverpool to me this still does not compute so that's the whole setting and in that case the result doesn't matter and I think that most Lusk fans would agree with that now here's me, I always look a little bit at the overall picture and it was pretty pretty clear it will be a hard hard ask and Lusk would need at least a point out of that if you wanna you know a have a shot at maybe making it into the second round of the Europa League but even having a better chance of staying alive but as long as to lose to not lose against saint gilles there was a chance there. Now the game itself there's really not much to talk about. Despite uh, Klopp making, I think, nine changes to the line of the plate City, there was still Mohamed Salah up there, there was a front line with Luis Diaz and, and with Cody Gakakpo, all uh, really, really good players in there. Maybe the back line and the midfield was not, but you know, you could see that even with this lineup, and I always say a B line lineup that those uh, games is actually probably even a tad more dangerous for the simple reason that they actually want to show that they belong in the first team. Uh, you could see for the majority of the game, they're just two levels above the precision and the speed that they can play with. This is something that a good Austrian Bundesliga side cannot cope with. Uh, especially since this was a game that Liverpool needed to win to secure first place in the group. Uh, so uh, that added a little bit spice that made it a lot harder uh, to actually get something out of this game. I would say Lusk did not sit back and defend. They would never do that. And I think for 10 minutes, while I could see that Liverpool is the better team, I actually think they had a courageous showing. But more or less with the real first chance uh, Liverpool score through Luis Diaz when you just completely forget about him he heads in and just a few minutes later uh, I thought that Oliverov had taken the ball off uh, Salah no he did he did not it actually takes a deflection Gakpo and in the empty and I thought oof this could get ugly but I honestly didn't care my wife uh, we start we, we started watching said I'm really nervous I said you know I'm not nervous. I will get nervous if we have a good result going because my expectation was the 5 nil or some, some, something like that. Anything better than that, I would be fine with that. And just playing there is, I'm happy. I, you know, there, there was literally nothing to lose there except if it would have gotten really ugly. And to be honest, the chance was there for it to get really, really, really ugly, especially for herself, I think. Um, because he he hitting the crawl crossbar, but what I also saw is that whenever Lusk had a chance, and you know there was one, it was it wasn't offside with Schul from a short distance doesn't hit the goal, uh, and then a few where you think yeah if you get the last pass right, you might get a good chance to score, but I don't want to make out that this was one thing where. Uh, Lusk should have scored in the first, 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 first half and, and so on. Uh, Liverpool were just better and all the statistics showed. But I want a lot uh, Lusk to at least 
have a courageous showing, always trying to play, play, play forward, even though you're completely outmatched. And again, the last support, even with two goals down, never stopping, always singing. Uh, you heard mostly them and not the, uh, the, the Liverpool fans, except when there was a goal scored. And I think this was just amazing. Yes, for Liverpool, this is a nothing game, more or less, um, you know. Velasquez is the game of the century, if you would like. But still, uh, being that loud in a stadium that is so has is hell is hell is, is such hell a ground. That, that, that was pretty pretty amazing. Any chances of any sort of comeback? Uh, you know, there was a penalty. It, it was a fortunate penalty by Laval. I know he wanted to play the ball. At first, Salah makes it 3-0. I think he, Laval was speculating for a straight down shot, but 3-0, the game was done. That done, does it. But then. Lask really had had her chances. First, Lubicic, two free players to the right side. Need to play it over. Then Mustafa came out. Had actually two really good opportunities. Squandered them and to total off, he gets off with a hamstring pulled. Yeah, this was the, probably the most horrid showing of a Lask play in a long time. But then Kone came on and Lask really had her chances. I think they would have deserved a goal. I'm not saying that 3-1 or 4-1 would have been uh, just good. I think the four goals probably show a little bit the difference, but it would have been fun. Well, as I said, it ended 4-4-0 because Cole de Gakpo installed stoppage time. It wasn't really necessary to be honest, but you know, it ends 4-0. So be it. Uh, I fully with uh, the most of the last fans there just celebrating and really happy and that they came and thanked the support was really good. I was also a little bit, you know, um, did we really need to change that many shirts? I mean, uh, you know, I really like the tradition of changing shirts. But none of the Liverpool players were interested in the last shirt. This is kind of, this is what bugs me now, no, 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 this, you know, even 20 years ago, if a small player would, 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 would go up to a too big player, you would, swap, you would swap the shirts. Not not going up to Salah, can I please have your shirt? And uh, they were all nice, I was saying, but Salah gives the shirt, doesn't get nothing in return. That to me, uh, something lost there. But hey, it was fun, and as I said, the situation in the group is not perfect. Uh, Lask is still last with only uh, a win, and I still mourn the loss losses in Toulouse and in uh, in Belgium, where in both cases you probably should have gotten at least a point out of it. Um, given how the game went, maybe even more in Toulouse than uh, in in Belgium. But Union you know, Saint-Gerard had actually really good chances in Toulouse to actually win the, the, the game. Early, early chances for, for Toulouse, but it ends with a nil-nil draw. Meaning now that Toulouse is three points ahead of Union Saint-Gerard. They played two draws, so this is level. It will come down to goal difference. Uh, so if Toulouse should lose to Lusk and uh, Union Saint-Gerard need to win against Liverpool, that's the only chance. Given that Liverpool has nothing to play for, yeah, no, Lusk theoretically has something to, to, to play for. Now, Lusk need to beat Toulouse to have a uh, chance and hope that Union Saint-Gerard do not win because they would win the head-to-head. -head. So I think there's some small chance that Lusk can advance. Uh, in any case, it will be the last game. Uh, it will be a celebration. And I think I always expect a fourth spot. Let's see where it goes. I really hope there will be. Uh, they will have, have a chance to go in the conference league and then I can wear this jersey uh, with a little bit more reason. By the way, jersey, I really like the last home jersey uh, that they have for, for, for the season. Without the yellow sleeves, it really looks nice, I gotta say. For the other uh, games, let's run through the groups uh, and look at the, the results. I want to actually start for once in Group A, you know, E, then we go into it. We, we do it alphabetically, except for Group E, which we already have talk, talked about. In Group A, we have now Westman Freiburg already qualified. Uh, it was always going, going, to, going to, to, to be that way. Freiburg beating Olympiakos 5-0. Three goals by Gregoric, he assists the fourth, and then Adamo, another all Austrian, assists the fifth uh, goal through Doan. It's the biggest loss for, I think, Olympiakos in their uh, Euro European history, and of course, the biggest one for Freiburg, as far as I know. So they're look, looking strong. Um, West Ham, in a sublimely boring game, beat Bacca Topola 1 0. So those two are now level on points, and they will have the head to head of who will win the group in London in the sixth round. 
The hipsters group B had two uh, very different uh, <laughs> games. We had Brighton making up for the home loss to Ike by winning away at Ike thanks to a penalty. 1-0 giving themselves a good, uh, good, good shot and they are now advanced as well. Ike and Ajax are out. Ajax losing at OM 4-3. Remember the first game ended 3-3. It's now 4-3 for IM. Um, Obama Young was the hero of the e evening scoring a really nice bicycle kick goal ajax actually with a man down uh equalized to 3-3 but then a really stupid uh goalie decision gives uh, om a pen penalty and they lose it in stoppage time 4-3 so om and brighton are through and it's only for the group win there uh we also had a huge win for sparta prague who i'm wearing uh one nil at home to bet this uh giving them a real uh shot in this group and this group is still more or less wide, uh, wide open especially since also rangers only mentioned one one at home to aris limassol uh could not find the late winner so uh that was another really really interesting game group d Sturm Graz, the big disappointment from, from an Austrian point, point, point of view. Uh, they were eyeing to get at least a draw against Rakov at home. Uh, they did not play well. Rakov actually deserved it, although the win came late. Alexander Pras had a humongous chance. Wide open, open net, he shoots it straight at the goalie. Uh, that could have turned the game around, because if that, if that goes, uh, Sturm had just turned the game into their favor. And then they concede a late goal by, um, you know, Again, not no 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 playing out nice and then just ball watching uh, around the uh, I think yeah Yebo scored the winner. Uh, it's meant also that uh, Sporting with a draw at Atalanta could uh, qualify already for the next round. If Sturm would have gotten a draw, so they still would have had, had a chance. So it doubly hurts. Um, that game had a great Skamaka goal to open it up. I mean, that shot is almost unbelievable the way it is from far out. And you think this could never, never go in, but it does. Atalanta had had in a few, 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 few chances. Sporting in the first half was not really in, into the game, but when they had chances, they actually were really dangerous. In the second half, it was all Sporting. Edwards equalized. Uh, and then there was a double uh, <laughs> upright hit, uh, one shot. Uh, Sporting could have won this one very well, but so Atalanta win that group. Sporting are through already in second place. And it's between Sturm and Rakov who continues in the Conference League, uh, where Sturm just holds the slimmest of advantages with a single goal. Head-to-head uh, -head is even, so it will come down to goal. The difference Sturm have got goal Sporting and Rakov holds Atalanta. I don't think this looks very good for Sturm Graz and this is a huge disappointment because Sturm Graz after uh, last season showing one would have, have, have thought they will do better. Then we have uh, Group F start Ren getting a huge uh, win in Budapest against Maccabi Haifa 3-0, you know, no specs, uh, specters. Whereas Villarreal also had it a little bit harder than you would uh, think. They had a 3-0 lead and then Panathinaikos put in two goals to make it a little bit tighter um, to maybe, you know, Villarreal get the revenge because Panathinaikos won the first, first game start Ren and uh, Villarreal go through in this group already, so also fully advanced there. Group G, we also know the teams that are advancing in Slavia and Roma. However, that Roma, after Lukaku uh, took the lead, only managed one one at the uh, at Put them now at this, this one, because Slavia win at the last seconds at Sheriff. That was a crazy game going back and forth. Slavia win it in the la la second after beating Sheriff already 6-0. They hold now the advantage and the head-to-head -head is also dead even. So uh, watch out for Slavia, probably will win this group. Uh, Leverkusen have already won this group and then we had, uh, they got a 2-0 at Hecken. But the Malta Karabakh game was a really uh, nail-biter in a way. This was whoever wins that one has, of course, the inside track of moving on in, to, uh, in the Europa League. Um, with Molde definitely more needing the win because Karaba, uh, because they have to play Leverkusen, a Leverkusen team that is cruising. Um, Karabak took the lead and were holding on to it. Uh, Molde getting two goals in the last 10 minutes of the game, but deep in stoppage time, they concede an equalizer. And so Karabak now have a huge chance by uh, hosting Hecken to advance where Molde needs to win in Leverkusen and then it doesn't look good. So a uh, really, really, really tough one for Molde right there. So if we see now 
the overall chances of winning it are uh, as in all European competition, there's a Premier League team being the humongous favorite. It's, of course, Liverpool. Leverkusen. I think Le Leverkusen are, are underrated here. Brighton, Atalanta, Betis, West Ham, Roma have actually fallen because they will pro most probably finish now in second place, which is not good, good for them. It will also be interesting who will come in from the Champions League. You see PSG riding high there. They might qualify. I mean, they have only a 45% chance. Uh, to enter the playoffs or a 30% chance to go, uh, go in the round of uh, 6 16 so um, they may not make it but you know it is an interesting pro pro position to have uh, PSG in the Europa League maybe they finally could win some silverware uh, again I also would like to see like a PSG OM match ma 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 when the Europa League although that might be one that will end the Europa League uh, upcoming match we already said Lask to lose I will be there uh, Lask Absolutely need to win and then hope that uh, Liv uh, that Union you know, Central last team do not win against Liverpool. Then you would be level on points and or even better than if Liverpool would, would win and you would um, go on into the conf 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 league, which would be a pretty big result. Uh, Rennes Vira for the group win. Then there's a, uh, you know Roma and Slavia at home. Um, Slavia. If they win against Sevet, they have the group win. Uh, we already talked about the Mold and Hecken situation. And then we have uh, for the late games, uh, Brighton and OM play out for the uh, direct gru group win. We have the open group Sparta actually having to go to Limassol, but that's probably the easier uh, draw. And Betis and Rangers will take points away from for from each other. So this is a very wide open group and in in interesting one. Um, we have Western against Freiburg for the group win. And then we have this uh, between Rakov and Sturm Graz who will go on, um, you know, for an Austrian, for a Polish fan, that might be interesting. But yeah, that was it from me from, from the Europa League. Yeah, Lask is still alive in Europe, not in the Europa League any, 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 anymore. It was a great showing uh, in Liverpool by the fans, mostly the team tried to do the best, but of course they were completely outmatched. But it was also a very interesting evening with big results. The checks are really, really, really good. I actually think they will get a big rise in the um, five year standing. So let's see where this will be going. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.